may be bleak, but this music is really getting to the crowd. Uh, making teenagers depressed is like shooting fish in a barrel. James, you a fan of the song Zero? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Of course, of course I am. Cool. So we talked in the previous videos. We talked about how Melancholy of the Senate is a concept album, uh, as Billy would describe it, trying to create Gen uh, Gen X's version of the Wall. And here he is naming the character that he is. Zero is the character. A lot of folks get annoyed with that. They are, okay. they hate they hate that Corgan is saying that Melancholy is some, you know, Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars, uh, David Bowie character thing, because everyone finds mm -hmm. it so personal, and they thought that these songs were personal to Billy. I'm trying okay. to tell everyone that that's still the damn case. There's, there, <laughs> Zero is a, is a rock star god version of Billy Corgan, but the basic facts of the upbringing are the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so when he <laughs> speaks about child abuse or any of these feelings that are in this album, that was him at some point in his life. So, first of all, as yeah. the like musical layman who doesn't pay attention to that shit, you know, like I never realized like some, a lot of the context behind the melancholy songs, right? Sure. Like, so I didn't realize that this was him explaining the Zero character. I didn't even realize Zero was a character. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what I find interesting, if I heard you correctly, is, is that basically he created the Zero character based off of himself to tell the story of himself, and people to, are pissed to, to that be it's the about rock Zero, to, yeah, and not him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I mean, I but, I but also, not just to tell the story about himself because he's he's providing a lot of hope, a lot of hope mm -hmm. that 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 hadn't necessarily worked out for him at that point yeah um uh, i just wanted to point out that like every everything that you've heard about the zero character being a character that it still means that these are personal personal songs when he talks about child abuse when he talks about love he means it he's just using a rock god avatar to do it because he he didn't feel like a rock god himself and the world was telling him he wasn't rock and roll enough wasn't cool enough and yeah. you know telling me wasn't good looking enough and so i like that the song and the concept came before the t-shirt before the fashion thing if you see the band yeah. in the studio making this album he's not wearing the zero shirt he hasn't shaved his head they just look like normal people and so here's here's billy corgan explaining the zero shirt and the look I'm sure everyone's anxious to uh, start hearing you play some live music. Now, the first, let's take an old song of yours. Okay. We're going to take Zero, which okay. I think is... Uh, I'm so glad you're doing this. Do you still like playing this song? I like this song a lot. You do like this yeah, song. I'm, I'm glad we're playing this one. And uh, when, you, when you used to perform this, I mean, at least years ago, you'd wear a Zero t-shirt. <laughs> Did that mean you felt like nothing? It was a... It's a convoluted thing, but I'll be simplistic. Um... I kept being told I wasn't attractive enough, I wasn't this enough, I wasn't that enough, and so I thought, fuck all you all, I'm going to negate myself. I'll shave my head, and I literally will put across my chest, I am nothing. Is that when you first, I remember when you shaved your head yeah. and I was shocked. Yeah, it was like, literally like, okay, I will negate, I will blank myself in front of you. Was the song about being a zero, or was it about drug addiction? Because no, no, it was, it, was, it was about feeling like, uh, you know, that the, the world does not have, has views you as having no value yeah and you were kind of always judged by how you looked and people were commenting i've been hearing it my whole life yeah, right. it's a weird it's a weird thing because i mean you know like most people don't know i have this massive birthmark on my arm right, right so like when that. you're five and six and kids are like uh oh if he touches you you die Right. I mean, that's a that's a little kid. That's like a hard thing to fathom. Right. Know? Is that what the other little kids would say? They see your birthmark yeah. on your arm and they say, oh. did you get burned in a fire? Or do you have a disease? And, and your back would probably always go up, it's, even when you walked into a room as a kid, because you yeah. knew the question was inevitably going to come. Am I going to, you know, hey, and, I was very, and I was very tall when I was young. Right. And so, you know, it's like that thing you can't hide, you know. Yeah. But that started this kind of uh, reverse conversation in my mind. In essence, I was having one conversation in my mind who I knew I was versus the person I was willing to present and that started this and then the abuse and all that that contributes to it you learn you always have like a split personality 
kind of him putting it into words, like being told that he was nothing so many times to where he was like, can you just kind of give the world a double bird and flip it back on them and, and respond by being like, fine, I'll just zero myself out in front of you, you know? And, oh, and yeah. that's pretty defiant and clever at the same time, you know? If you take the context of what he was talking about with society and the world telling him he's zero, so this yeah. this like Roman orgy thing. I th the way I interpret it is this is the madness of the world around them, and they're basically mm. playing. They're playing to that that audience that told him he was nothing, right? Yeah, and uh, that's why they look so fucking pissed and bored while they play it. Because um, look, <laughs> yeah. it's the audience they're playing for. It's not that they're pissed and bored playing the song, but in this context. Like, oh, yeah, you like us now. You know, because at yeah. this point, they'd already <laughs> hit with Tonight Tonight, 1979, Bolt, Butterfly Wings. Bam! They were it. They were on top of the world. Like, okay, now I'm going to show you what I felt like when I first got this idea in my head and what it feels like to play yeah. to people like you. I like <laughs> that, man. <laughs> absolutely love that guitar riff <laughs> yes. it is so cool i know there's a word for it where harmonics like, um, harmonics yeah the harmonics yeah. i love the, the doo -doo 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 -doo. harmonics yeah it. like yeah yeah it's <laughs> unbelievable it gets me every time it's <laughs> so damn good it's icon that riff is iconic to me yeah like, that's an iconic yeah. rock riff to me in that first 10 <laughs> seconds you're like what yes yes yeah. more more And cleanliness is godliness, and God is empty, just like me. Okay, I hated this oh, band. Yeah. <laughs> I hated them. And then those four lines got to you, <laughs> dude. Hearing that as like a thirteen-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. Yes, it just—it was the perfect hook for me. That breakdown. I love the start-stop aspect of it. And yeah. And hilariously, you're going to gush about that part, too, I'm sure. But just oh, to yeah. kick it off, a lot of the reviews of this album hated on him for that. Pitchfork, <laughs> Pitchfork famously called it his lyrical rock bottom. <laughs> oh, my God. So, <laughs> all right. For me, it's all about the first and the last line here. In the space that I was in as a, as a young man, you know, the emptiness is loneliness. I very often between um, freshman year of high school to the end of college kind of pictured myself as lost in the void. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't yep. know what I wanted. Yep. So emptiness is loneliness. Dude, that, I mean, that spoke to me directly, painted that picture amazingly. Yep. And then at the end, uh, and God is empty just like me, again, going through that time, I... I was raised religious in a religious family, not like yeah. super religious, but like I went to church and stuff. Sure. And I, I was questioning a lot of that. Right. And, right. and, you know, like that just kind of hit that, like, man, that, that line, it just, it just felt right. 
So to say that this is his lyrical bottom <laughs> is just utter <laughs> bullshit. Fuck what came before. Now, the next lines are the lines. Toxic, <laughs> intoxicated with the madness. I'm in love with my sadness. Hell yes. Nailed yeah, it. I was, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I was kind of surprised you stopped it right there because I was going to say the same thing. Like the next couple of lines are, are awesome too. And cleanliness is godliness, and God is empty, just like me. piano is jonathan Melvoin. he was the keyboardist uh okay. keyboardist for the band during this tour he is the person who died who overdosed with jimmy and died oh okay um this is the last video that he was ever featured in he has a great piano career is in a lot of stuff before this i like that they immortalized him in the band in this way putting yeah. him that right there at that spot during that crazy solo and him doing like i don't know a cracked out Beethoven thing. Is that what it's, I don't know what that is, but uh, it worked. It's great. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it was maybe weeks, weeks after that, that person was dead. Jimmy was oh, well. fired. Can't get through it without talking about his voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a perfect, perfect rock and roll voice for those lines. This type of song, his voice is effing awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's to me like what makes this song so iconic is, is like matching the singing with the meaning behind the lyrics. Like it just all marries so well together. Oh, yeah. And and again, I mean, I think the re one of the reasons I like this song so much, aside from really digging the guitars, is just that 75% of this song feels like it's speaking directly to me. And this this like uh, verse is no exception. Oh, yeah. You know, like blame yourself for wanting more, like just the whole thing. And then like the way he sings it is like, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> how it should sound. smile at the end yeah i know i love that little smirk at the end love that little smirk <laughs> it's just that kind of thing like yeah, chew on that <laughs> i love it now all of the people who've been holding us telling us we're nothing for the past decade all like us and we we have to play this song for them but we ain't happy about it you know like yeah 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 he, like recontextualizing the song to also represent them as a band um in some sense you know i think that's great man <laughs> this is one of the most important rock singles of the 90s i think it okay. launched a million bands it's iconic in a different way it's not iconic in the fact that everybody and their grandma loves it 
but for a certain audience, they were ready for this video, and they took that as the the opening template for whatever they wanted to do going forward. I love it. I love this song. I can't believe it's as low on the list as it you're, is for you're, you. You'll be so mad. Yeah. This is <laughs> number yep. 42. Number 42 on my list. Oh, it moved up a little. So. Number 42. 42 now. 42. Right. <laughs> I'm a little burnt out on this. A little burnt out. Yeah. Fair uh, enough. Like I said with Tonight Tonight, it's a 10. It's it's yeah, undeniable. Yeah. Undeniable. It's great. <laughs> but it's... Yeah. It's just a little less great after all these years. <laughs> Save the hate, y'all. Save it. I don't care. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I agree. All right. I'm Justin. That's James. See y'all. Bye.